All right, my math counts, people, my counters of math. Here we go. We've got sequences stretched. So this is going to be a quick one. So we want to look at a couple different types of sequences. And sequences are just numbers like that are related to each other in a row. So here I've got a sequence, negative 4, 3, 10, 17, dot, 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 meaning that this sequence is going to keep on going. Now, when it's an arithmetic sequence, in arithmetic sequence, you're going to add and subtract to get to the next term. So these are all terms. So we're just going to add or subtract to get to the next one. And we can see here that we are adding 7 each time. So that's what makes it arithmetic, is we are adding 7 each time. So this is my first term, second, third, and fourth. And then it's just going to keep on going infinitely. So we do have a formula for this. You don't need the formula, but the formula helps us understand what's happening here. So A of N, A of N is going to stand for the term we want or the term we're going to stop at. Or the term we're going to. That's not really good math language, but I'm just going to go with it. Uh, a of 1, or A sub 1. This is our first term in the sequence. In this case, our first term is negative 4. So A of 1 is the first term. And it's the value of the first term. So the value of our first term is negative 4. Uh, N is just the number of terms. So it's not the value, it's just the number of terms. And then D is what we call the common difference. And the common difference is just how much we're adding or subtracting to get to the next number. In this case, we can see that our common difference is seven. So if we wanted to, let's say we wanted to find the 100th term. If I want to find the 100th term, that means I'm looking for A sub 100, so A of 100. So that means the term number that I'm going to, there's going to be 100 terms in my sequence. Okay, so the formula to find the 100th term, because that's A of N, we want the 100th term is you should have the starting term, which is negative 4, plus n minus 1, so n is 100 because we want the 100th term, and then multiply by the common difference. Now, why does is this equation working? Well, let's think about it this way. When I'm at the first term, how many times did I add by 3 to get there? Well, there's nothing over here, so I never added by 3 to get to the first term. To get to the second term, or not added by 3, added by 7. Uh, to get to the second term, I'm adding by 7 once to get to the second term. To get to the third term from the first term, we're adding by 7 twice. To get to the fourth term, we're adding by 7 three times. So the number of times that we're adding by 7 is always one less than the term number. That's this right here one less than the term number. And then we're adding by seven each time. So this is just counting how many times from the first one, this is our first value, how many times from our first value am I going to add by seven? That's what this does. And it's always one less than the term number. So if you think of it that way, to get to the hundredth term, Give me a different color here. If I want to go to the hundredth term, how many times would I add by seven to get to the hundredth term? Well, it'd be 99 times. So I do 99 times seven. That's how many times I would add seven, 99 times, because it's always one less than the term number. And then I always have to have a starting point. My starting point is negative 4. So 
that's how I find my my hundredth term. Where do I start? Negative four. How many times do I add by seven? 99 times. So you would just do 99 times seven and then add four. So that would be, um, oops, be 693 minus four. So we would find out that our hundredth term is actually 689. So you can do it without the formula as long as you know what the formula is counting. The count, the formula is just trying to find out how many times we are adding our common difference. In this case, to get to the hundredth term, we added our common difference 99 times. See, it's 100 minus. So if you actually use the formula, if I want to find the hundredth term, it would be equal to the first number, negative 4, plus n, which is 100, because n and n are the same thing. We're looking for our hundredth term. Minus 1 times the common difference of 7. And that's the, that's the math way to do it. But we're just doing stuff quick, right? So if I want to get to the hundredth term, I add 799 times. So 999 times 7. If I want to get to the 200th term, I would add by 7 199 times. So we can really quickly do that. Now, a lot of these problems seem super simple, but... You have to really know what they're meaning. You have to be able to use these equations in new ways. So don't just look at the equation and think that you can only do, do it in this direction. You can do it in multiple directions too. So I can always, if I want to go backwards along this sequence, instead of adding by 7, I would subtract by 7 if I wanted to go that direction. All right, what if I wanted to add up all of those 100 terms? Mm -hmm. So let's say that I want to find out what is the sum of all 100 terms from this problem. It's a lot of terms. So I have a formula for that. In order to find the sum of all 100 terms, what I'm going to do is basically... I'm going to take the average of the first term and the second term. So that's what this is, right? If you add the two numbers, then the divide by two. And then just multiply by the number of terms that it took to get me there. So n in this case is going to be the number of terms again. A1 a sub 1, again, is our first term. And A of n is our last term. So in the previous problem, if I wanted to find the sum of all those numbers, all I would have to do is say, okay, there's 100 terms in there. My first term was negative 4. My last term was 689, and then I'm going to divide by 2. Why am I dividing by 2? Because I'm taking the average of the first and last term, and then multiplying by 100. So here I would get 100 times 685, which is 50 times, because I'm dividing by 2, 50 times 685. So 34,250. So if I added all 100 terms that I have up there, that would be my total, 34,250. All right, finally, a geometric sequence is when you multiply or divide to get to the next term. So in an arithmetic sequence, we were adding or subtracting to get to the next term. But in a geometric sequence, we are multiplying or dividing to get to the next term. So for this one, I forgot to write down the formula. Okay, so for this one, if I want to find my last term that I'm looking for, I would take my first term and multiply it by r to the n minus 1 power. 
All right, let's find out what this R and all this other stuff is. So we already know that A of N is the term that we're going to. And that's the value of the term we're going to. And we know that A of 1 is our starting term. In this case, R is going to represent our common ratio. Common ratio just means the number that we're multiplying by each time or dividing by each time. So let's look at this next problem. It's pretty obvious. We are multiplying by 2 each time. So this is times 2. We're multiplying times 2. And we're multiplying times 2. So we're multiplying by 2 each time. Now let's say that we actually started at our third term here. And we want to go backwards and find out what our first term was. Well, if we want to go backwards and find out what our first term is, what we need to do is instead of multiplying by 2 this way, we can divide by 2 to go the other direction. So 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. And then if I divide by 2 again, I get 3 fourths. Okay, so what is this equation saying? This equation is saying what I need to do is multiply where I'm starting, time the com common ratio. So in this case, our starting value is 3 fourths. Our common ratio, we were multiplying by 2 each time. And then n is the term number we're going to. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. I've got 6 terms there. So let's say that I wanted to go to the eighth term. So I'm going to go to the eighth term. Now we already know what the value is. I just want to show you how the equation works. So I'd go, you know, 48 and then 96 would be my next one. So we know the answer is 96, but I just want to show you how it works. So what are we doing with the n minus 1 here? Okay, so I am keeping track of how many times I'm multiplying by 2. So to go from here to the sixth term, I multiply by two, one, two, three, four, five times to get to the sixth term. It's just like the previous one. We're always doing it by one less than the term number. So if I wanted to find the eighth term, I would say, okay, I'm gonna take three fours, and then how many, three fours, and then how many times did I multiply by two to get there? So my common difference is two, and to get to the eighth term, I multiplied by seven, two, seven different times. Because to get to the eighth term, remember it's always one less than the term number. So we would just go ahead and multiply that out and we get our wonderful answer of 96. And that'd be the eighth term. All right, there you go. Geometric sequences, arithmetic sequences, and how to find the sums of the terms of the sequence. That's all I got for you. Math hard. See you later. Bye.